In this video, we are going to be doing an overview of a weapon which often has more of a psychological use as a terror-inspiring device than it may have on the battlefield as of its deployments in the original setting of 3025. A gun with so much power that should it land on a limb, for many mechs this will mean the removal of that component from the mech. But more shockingly, there is no mech in the game that can survive the full-on impact of it to their head. The original head capper and a sledgehammer to break through even the most armored of targets. Today, we are going to discuss the dread-inspiring AC-20 Autocannon. As per our other reviews, I would like to clarify that the AC-20 class of Autocannon is not a single weapon system but a classification of weapons that happen to share a similar weight class and overall purpose in Battletech. Meaning that an AC-20 on a King Crab may not be the same kind of AC-20 weapon as it is in a Hunchback. It's just for in-game rules that they have the same stats, and in-universe they may even behave differently. In terms of how they may vary, the AC-20 autocannon can vary in size from 120mm firing in short bursts to an immense single-shot 200mm cannon. For the purposes of the tabletop, both of these systems are the same. The AC-20 has no peers in the original 3025 setting. There is no allegory to the PPC or large laser or really anything of note. The closest comparison that can be made is to that of the medium laser, though these weapons are dramatically different in their use and weight. Weighing in at a shocking 14 tons, the AC-20 is the heaviest single weapon in all of 3025 that can be outfitted on a battle mech. It also takes up an enormous 10 critical slots in any mech compartment that it is installed. This size makes the AC-20 fragile in game terms, as if a critical hit tags one of the regions, the likelihood of knocking out the AC-20 or destroying it in game terms is extremely high, as it only takes one slot being damaged to end its use from a single critical hit. Each turn of fire from an AC-20 that successfully hits a target results in 20 direct damage to one focused region of its target, which can be, frankly, devastating, Given that few machines, tank, aircraft, or mech, can sustain this much damage without losing most or all of their armor points in that area. Each time it fires as well, it creates a not insubstantial amount of heat, namely seven points of it. To cover its ammunition, every one ton of ammunition results in five rounds of fire. Range, however, is this weapon's nemesis. Though impressive and terrifying, it unfortunately can only land shots in a very small region, comparatively to the range of many other weapons. Pilots in-game that are standard intersphere pilots of the time have a gunnery of four, meaning that they need a four or more on two six-sided dice combined to result in a hit barring any prohibitive factors. Well, the AC-20 has the range of nine hexes making it half the overall range of a PPC or AC-5. Its breakdown of ranges are a short range of 1 to 3 hexes, there are no penalties to hit. 4 to 6 hexes are its medium range, making the target too harder to hit. And 7 to 9 are its long range, making the target 4 harder to hit. This means that a long range shot from a static target to a static target, with no cover or forests or any obstructions in the way, needs an 8 to hit on two dice. Despite its range shortcomings, the AC-20 is arguably the most feared weapon in Battletech's introductory era. Its high concentration of damage more or less threatens any mech, regardless of their weight, and can knock down machines over just its impact alone. It tears off 20-point slabs of armor, which is more points than a full ton of standard armor in a single hit. This quantity of protection loss, or even internal component loss, is troubling enough, but truthfully, its most frightening property is the fact that a head on a battle mech can only have a maximum of 12 points of armor and internal structure, meaning this impact is enough to destroy any mech warrior who is unlucky enough to take a direct hit to the head. 
This psychological impact on commanders and mech warriors alike, who are concerned enough that the huge cannon may dissect their mechs or decapitate them, will often avoid closing with mechs that contain this enormous cannon series. This means its short range can become an exclusionary zone for many who rightly fear it. It has a power beyond simply its enormous ability to do damage, but its ability to affect the minds of the adversaries who have to face it, especially in 3025. The AC-20 series is an extreme kind of weapon. It does incredible damage, can knock over mechs from one hit, and will often have a psychological impact of its weapon's ability. This is offset by very poor range performance and ammunition volume per ton. Ammunition itself comes with the drawback of potentially making the mech or vehicle it's mounted on weak to ammunition explosions. It's also the hottest autocannon of its era, creating seven total points of heat, which while this may be good compared to energy weapons, is still not an ignorable amount of heat. Finally, at 14 tons, it's an enormous investment on many mechs and vehicles that come with it installed. But even with these drawbacks factored in, its damage level is so concentrated and uniquely dangerous in 3025, otherwise known as the Introtech era, and even somewhat into the Clan Invasion era, that the AC-20 is a weapon that commands respect from anyone who faces it. One hit can be the end of a mech, whether it's 20 tons or even 100. When this cannon roars, everyone listens. Thank you for joining me here today. If you enjoyed this content, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. There is a YouTube member program to support this channel as well, and I appreciate the support from members immensely. With that, I will catch all of you in the comment section below.